We're gonna get this 5.9 Magnum running. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna be making a standalone wiring harness using the factory JTEC ECU. So this is the factory ECU that comes in trucks like that back there. Uh, we are gonna be using this, show you guys how to wire. We already got some of the harness split open because we removed stuff for like the AC compressor and the automatic transmission since we won't be using it. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna mainly be focusing on stuff other than just wiring injectors in and stuff like that. We'll show you guys the needed stuff to have this engine running out of a vehicle, like a fuse box with supply to it. So we've been sitting here wiring this guy all in. So we got pretty much all the injectors, the coil pack, cam crank sensors, intake air temp sensor, all the sensors wired into the ECU. The only stuff we don't have wired into the ECU is constant power. We need ASD power. We need ground for the ECU, which we're gonna kind of just hook up to a battery for now to see if we can get it to fire off some ether to hear her come to life because we don't have a fuel system hooked up just to make sure we got the ECU wired up and everything's working good. We also got to put our cap and rotor on, run some plug wires. So I'm gonna right now put the cap and rotor on, show you guys how to plug wire up this guy, actually tighten all the spark plugs because I know they're all loose. Um, we might check one of them because we have a new set of spark plugs laying right over there. Check that out. Uh, put some oil in it, put an oil filter on it. We got to cut the torque converter, show you guys that because we need to use that with the starter for the actual starter because that's where our starter teeth mesh up to. So we'll probably cut the torque converter like right here along the bottom so it fits in there. Uh, poor torque converter, but that's all right. This is our stock torque converter from our transmission out of Whitey that we'll never use again. It was just gonna go in the scrap bin. So might as well reuse it and use it in something else. So let's get this plug wires ran and get some oil on this thing. Spark plug out this thing, you know, those look like they'll spark. So we'll just double check them all, make sure they're all tight. And then if this guy actually runs, we'll put some new plugs in it. I just want to hear it fire up. So we got these awesome yellow plug wires. Uh, if you guys want to pick these up, I'll put a link down in the description. I'll put a link down in the description for the cap rotor and stuff too. But look at these yellow plug wires put on. These are eight millimeter plug wires, which are probably way overkill, but you know, they're cheap and easy to get. So can't complain too much. So there's the plug wires all installed. You got to remember that this is cylinder one right here on the left side. You can even look and see that this cylinder head's farther forward than this cylinder head. Um, Fords like to start with this cylinder one and I'm a Ford tech now, so a little confusing, but that's okay. And then the firing order is right here, one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two, right on the intake manifold. So uh, on the cap, you can see right there, it says cylinder one. So that's cylinder one right there. Going all the way to cylinder one right there. And then you can just set up all your other plug wires going into a clockwise rotation. The center plug, of course, goes to your coil pack. So uh, we will clean up these plug wires, but for right now, we're just gonna leave them. So now we're gonna get a battery hooked up, or actually let's cut that torque converter and get it on the flex plate and get the starter installed. Then we'll get the battery and we'll get all our wiring attached and see if we can get this guy to crank and start up on some starting fluid. All right, we almost got this converter cut open, which is actually kind of a pain to do. Freaking puzzle. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, at least this wasn't a good torque converter. Look how worn out that bearing is. Hmm. 
makes me happy. So. Actually took a torque converter apart. Got yeah, cool pieces. Looks like a giant wiring mess because it is. But uh, this is our constant power right here. This guy. We got a fused. Well, it's not fused, but we have an ignition, uh, run, and start power wire. So the ECU will have power even under cranking. Down here we have our constant power to our starter and our starter solenoid power up wire. Uh, you can see that solenoid right there. That's our ticket. That's what's really running everything. And then we are using the factory uh, ignition switch for everything. So it'll still be factory, like run and then crank. We got everything like injectors, coil pack, sensors, everything wired into the ECU. Uh, we're gonna be working on, this is his green black wire is our uh, run start power wire uh, our big red guy right there that's our constant we got a couple grounds right there uh, we have our ASD input power we got run ASD power to all our injectors and coil pack and that's what this big boy is for right there uh, I do want to get like a fuse bar right here eventually but for now we're just gonna probably wire it into this but I want to hear this thing crank over um, other thing too is we got the torque converter all cut up and painted and it's looking nice so it's nice and thin to fit on there for our starter to actually hit something. So I think we're going to get this bolted on, get our starter bolted on, and then I'll show you guys the wiring for the ignition power, constant power, and grounds for our ECU. So this is a 30 amp fused for our fused ignition power to our ASD, to our PCM, pretty much to everything. This is controlled by the solenoid down there. That has constant battery voltage until you turn the key on and then it gets battery voltage to that yellow wire and then it comes up to here gives power this is a 30 amp fuse again feeding our asd relay and the pscm also our ignition power to all alternator when it gets there uh we got the ground wires we got attaching this is an asd watch for the pcm so we got wire that into our ignition feed, our actual ignition wire to the PCM. We got our constant hot wire hooked up. There's a 10 amp fuse down there for it. Yeah, we're just been grinding and wiring. It's extremely boring, but it is what it is. Uh, I want to hear this thing come to life. So uh, we got our new radiator for the beast chilling over here. Don't mind my messy garage. We're trying to kill this project out as fast as we can. But yeah, so this is the radiator that's going to be running in the lawnmower uh, it goes that way but this guy's nice and small should work good uh, it's pretty thick actually too so we'll probably want to run a single electric fan on it on the actual front of it because we're going to get this radiator close to the front of the motor as we possibly can just for the facts that we don't want this thing to be super extremely long i mean longer than it already is i mean it's already pretty long but i want to hear this thing fire up let's get that torque converter bolted up and finish up my wiring here. We'll see if we crank it and get some actual spark out of this thing. Which we do. So that's scary. So now we're gonna shoot some uh, carb cleaner down the throat of this thing and see if it'll fire up for a few seconds. So we gotta find a place for this two and a half gallon fuel cell, a battery, and an awesome Evil Energy fuel pressure regulator that we're gonna be running off of this little pump right here. If you guys wanna pick up one of these Evil Energy fuel pressure regulators, the link will be down in the description. Uh, but let's first find out if this battery is big enough because this battery is like 590 cold cranking amps to crank over the 5.9. So we're gonna get this in place, vice grip it into place and see if it'll crank this 5.9 over. So we had to put this ghetto big negative cable in, but we do have a vice script in a place. See if she'll work, see if she'll crank over. Make sure we have some 
oil pressure. Uh, the other thing too we need to do is uh, hook up the OBD2 port. Make sure that's all right. Since we know we have it wired right. Um, yeah, so now we gotta find a placement for this battery since that baby's kicking butt and working great. So we got our battery placement perfect. Uh, that's where she's gonna go, factory place. And then we also figured out where we're gonna put our fuel cell, which is gonna go right there between the legs because we've kind of ran out of room. Uh, we got a radiator chilling over here that's gonna go in. Uh, and we're gonna tuck this guy pretty much close to the front of the motor as we possibly can. And then we'll put a fan on probably this side as a pusher fan. So we're in the middle of working on the fuel cell. We got some stuff done on it, but we are working on the actual return fitting. So this is a 6AN because there's a 10AN on here. So we cut that 10AN off. We're gonna weld the 6AN on. And then we got the 6AN90 that we're gonna be using right there. And then this will be our actual feed from our pump because we're using an internal pump, not an external pump. So it'll be actually in the fuel itself. And this is what we got rigged up right here for our pump. Uh, you can tell that will bolt up to where the factory or where the fuel cell had its level sensor mounting hole. So let's get this TIG welded up, get this installed, and then we can start actually plumbing and installing our fuel pressure regulator and everything to the motor itself so it can run longer than five seconds off a of starting fluid. So before I button this guy up, I thought I would show you guys what it looks like on the inside. So we got a fuel pump down right there our wiring for our fuel pump, our feed from our pump that comes out right here at a 90. Um, we'll JB weld this so it doesn't leak. And there's our return, our 6AN return, our 10AN vent. And then we got the two 10ANs just capped off down there. And then this will go right in the middle of the mower. So we're gonna get this guy wrapped up, put in the mower. Then we're gonna show you guys how to plumb in a fuel pressure regulator and set our pressures correctly. And then we'll fire this beast up and hear it run. Finished fuel cell, boom! So we got the pump, everything on the inside of this thing, if you guys can see that, uh, she's all pretty much ready to go. Uh, it's bolted down, so that's our feed. That's our return, not using those guys, the blue caps off. So uh, get the wire that in, run some plumbing. Uh, we got a fuel pressure regulator right here. Um, we're probably gonna mount it like right there. Our feed for our fuel rails right there. So that'll be a nice easy place to run a return and feed style to the fuel pressure regulator. Um, I also want to run this truck style intake on it just because then everyone kind of knows it's a 5.9 Magnum because of the air filter setup. So to connect our fuel to our fuel rail, we're using one of these adapters, 5 16 to 6 AN uh, adapters. Uh, if you guys want to pick up like this fuel pressure regulator or this adapter, any stuff like that, we'll have it down in the description below. So we're just gonna push that over like that and then throw our lock collar on the opposite side, getting it threaded into the fitting itself. And just like that, so we'll get this tightened down more. And then now we have a 6AN fitting so we can attach that to our fuel pressure regulator. And then we'll run our feed and return to our fuel pressure regulator to the tank. So we're gonna get this tightened down and we'll show you guys how to start building some lines. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what fittings we're gonna be running from where to where. So on the fuel pressure regulator, we have an in and out on both the sides, the left and right, and the bottom is the return. So you can run this fuel pressure regulator two different ways. Uh, you can run a feed into here, going to the fuel rail from the opposite side, and then a return going back to the tank. Or you can cap a side off and then run a feed, tee it into this side and tee it into the fuel rail, and then run a return. We're just gonna run it this style since we don't have any tees. So after we have our fittings figured out that we're gonna be using, uh, we need to figure out to cut our actual AN fitting. So we'll get it all nice and lined up here, figure out from nut to nut where to go. So we're gonna go to right there where we're gonna cut it. So then we're gonna take some electrical tape, go over the point that we're going to cut it. And what this electrical tape does is it holds together the actual braiding on the line so it doesn't flare. So then we can get our nut on before uh, actual installation. So we're gonna double check here, make sure we got it pretty close. Yep, so I'm just gonna cut it in the middle of electrical tape, make it a little bit longer, because you can always cut again. You can't add to this line, so 
We're gonna go cut this on the bandsaw and then start assembling these fittings. Now that our line's cut to the right length, we're gonna start assembling our fittings. So the first thing we're gonna do is get this nut untwisted off. Uh, this is the rubber style hose, so this is not E85 compliant. So then we're gonna get our nut installed, and this is where the tape really comes into play here. And you can see we're tightening it onto this hose, so we need to get the hose all the way up to the bottom of these threads when we install it. So we're just gonna sit here pushing and twisting it all the way to the top. So you can see we made it all the way up with the rubber hose to the top of the threads of this portion of it. So now we can actually start installing our fitting. So we're gonna spray this with a little bit of lube, push it in there, and start threading it. Just like that, we got one hose put together, so now we're gonna do the other side and then go get this thrown into the lawnmower. So we got some fuel in there, so we can put the cap back on. Uh, we're gonna energize the pump quick and check for leaks. So we got all our AN lines installed, the black one being our return, this guy being a feed from the pump at the tank, whirls around, comes around, comes up here to the fuel pressure regulator, which regulates fuel pressure, feeds it to the fuel rail, and then whatever it doesn't use returns back to the tank right there at the top. So we got some uh, battery, some jumper wires, so we should be able to jump this guy to live, check fuel pressure, set fuel pressure, and check for leaks. So now we're gonna move our fuel pressure up a little bit. It's a pretty quiet pump. But we're gonna move our fuel pressure up. We're at about 40 PSI. We're just gonna tighten this Allen screw at the top. And set it right there for now. You can see our pump working away in there, hear the return, doing everything it's supposed to do. So now, we need to get this actually wired into the lawnmower. Get this guy actually wired in the lawnmower and then we can hear this baby run. We got the fuel pump wired in to our ignition power from our solenoid off a of fuse. So we got 25 amp fuse running that. We just got it kind of ghetto grounded. So when we turn the key on, we should be ready to go. There's fuel pump as you can hear. And then if we hit this, we should be running. That was awesome. I'm so pumped. <laughs> I'm speechless. Did you see you shoot the flame out? Oh, we gotta get that. We gotta get a better photo of that. That was, she runs good too. A little lumpy, but it's still got those old ass spark plugs in it. Oh, I'm shaking right now. Let's try that again. Get the full view this time.
That's awesome. Now we just gotta get driving. Plus we need a radiator because that's probably not too good for it sitting there running it. But I think she'll be okay. Obviously we had oil pressure because it wasn't knocking, so.